Good evening and welcome to Cooking with Christ. Okay then, let's start, shall we? We're using gas. So we're just putting the frying pan on a very low heat. And we add the first essential ingredient, which is olive oil, good quality. A little puzzle of that. I suppose you want to see it, but tough. <clears throat> this isn't really a cooking video, but I'm going to make dinner while doing it. Right. Time. Essential flavouring. About sort of 50 to 100 things. And some garlic chips. I should probably use fresh garlic, but I don't have it. And what I do with this is I crush it. With this. get that in and on. Now I'm practically a vegetarian, so these herbs and things really help uh, with the taste. Okay, so then Potato, sweet potato, parsnip, and a Jerusalem artichoke, which is filthy, I need to wash. Okay, let's cut off the amount of parsnip I want, and go and wash the Jerusalem artichoke. So I'm afraid <laughs> you're going to be left on your own for a minute. <clears throat> I always wash my vegetables with rainwater. So here we have the Jerusalem artichoke. So when I can get rare things like that from the farm shop certain times of the year. It's always good to do because you know most of the vegetables these days are not really getting all the goodness because the goodness isn't in the soil. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do the potato first. You know, I actually think when you connect with your food and it's natural, you're not just opening a packet, you know, it actually brings you a little bit of, it's pleasurable, it brings you a bit of joy and just good to do. So I cut the potatoes into a sort of chunks that size, chuck them in, and I'll do the parsnip, and 
no need to wash these because I'm peeling them, which ideally I wouldn't do. Maybe I won't with the Jerusalem artichoke actually. I might, for the first time, not peel it. So always have, always have the frying pan on a very low heat. Not loads of oil, just enough oil so that everything can get a bit of a coating. Now obviously that's going to take a while to warm up. I might just, just turn the heat up a little bit at the start just to get the process going. I think I might just eat that mud and all. Shall I just shave a bit off? Apparently the next generation of antibiotics are going to come from mud. So as they used to say a lot, God made dirt and dirt done up. <laughs> I remember people saying that. God made dirt and dirt done up. Quite agree. So, I just sort of cut this up. I haven't really had loads of experience with artichokes. Not even sure I can taste it when it's in there, but no, you do know. You know you've had something different. And and that really, you know, about food is like the feeling that you get after you've eaten. That that's that's the most important thing. So your body knows what's good for you. And when you've eaten something that's good for you, your body thanks you. A nice feeling in your tummy. And when you've eaten shit, your body thanks you for that, with an unpleasant feeling, right? Right, so that's sizzling, so I'll turn that back down. And, um, yeah. It's been a puzzling few days, and um, a lot going on in my head. Um, AJ Miller's latest videos, uh, I've watched all of them now, and they are very interesting, and he is saying some new things. Voila, at last. Well, the videos that they've recently uploaded from 2013, he was saying some slightly crazy things that are kind of true, but like when he's saying them and how he's saying them comes across like wrong and yeah, missing the mark. But the latest ones are good, and he, he is finally now saying some new things like. Whereas before it tended to be, there's this box of truth I've got, and that remained unchanged for, you know, right till 2012. Then 2013, that we that didn't get uploaded till 2015. There he's starting to go a bit off, and um, yeah, but it's getting better, and I do feel what he's doing with Mary, Mary being the medium, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's awesome. Um, and some of the new things that he's starting to say, like he's starting to talk more about sort of, you know, God would know what's going on. Um, bit more faith in the fact that God has planned it to be this way instead of him sort of continually sort of blaming humanity and making everyone feel pretty awful really I think so but no I do see him going in the right direction and I even I even suspect 
he might have actually listened to some of the things I've said. Um, and and maybe that's helped him get some more truth, define, refine his truth a bit more. But um, he's still totally down with the gay souls, and I'm, you know, I don't think there are. I haven't spent that much time thinking about it. Um, so that's going on. So. <clears throat> Because there's a lot of things he's said, but he's also, it's also sometimes, I get this feeling that, um, that he's challenging me as well. Um, the, way, the way he says things, I can't remember specific things. I mean, I, I, I listen to all of it. I was doing some other mundane task while listening to them, I've got to admit, so maybe there's a couple I should listen to again. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think um, he looks better as well. His energy is in, he's got better energy. And uh, yeah, but there's no way Mary's his soulmate. I mean, there's a couple of videos they uploaded from 2013 when she's talking about it, her identity, and it is the most unconvincing thing I've ever heard. And for all the other things that we hear them do, and when she's doing the mediumship, you know, I'm convinced that is true. She is doing that. That's that's pucker. But like, so there's a part two video, sort of an hour-ish long, and it's called, you know, about my identity, and she talks about her identity for about three minutes, and the rest of it she just goes off on one, or <laughs> something completely different. You know, if that is not a version, I don't know what is. And obviously the person who's interviewing her, a, a friend, a female colleague, you know, she's way too enamoured in Mary's glory to, you know, do a decent interview. With that being said, I'm going to just now do a bit more. Move them about a bit. Might add some mild spice paprika. <clears throat> but AJ, it, he is getting better. So I take back what I said before about don't listen to any of his new stuff. Um, if you're going to listen to stuff from uh, late 2015 on, do so. But again, use discernment as with anything, use your own discernment. Feel your truth. How do you feel the truth? In your belly. So, this is sweet potato. Love this stuff, absolutely gorgeous. And it goes, you know, I don't put it in as early as the potato because it can go quite mushy. Usually cooks quicker than potato, normal potato. But uh, it's nice when it's a bit soft. But there is good, there is different. Usually when I cook, I don't sit, stand and hover around. I cook, I go and sit down, get up, <laughs> move it about a bit, put something else on. I 
usually I, I, I cut them up a bit different than usual. I usually do them sort of thinnish chip shapes. Right. So now we have the mushroom and uh, a raw carrot to eat now. What's that back? If you want your dream to be, build it slow and surely. Do few things, but do them well. Simple joys are holy. If you want to live life free, take your time, go slowly. Small beginnings, greater ends, heartfelt work grows purely. Day by day, stone by stone, build your secret slowly. Day by day, you'll grow too, you'll know heaven's glory. So, am I worried about going mad? No. Because last year I realised insanity is a myth. Saint Francis took all his clothes off and he was just so happy and just loving everything. And the people around him could see he wasn't mad. They could see he was happy, you know, it'd be like a case of, I want some of what you're on. Anyway, that probably worried the establishment a bit. You know, we can't have too much of this going on. So this insanity myth would have been created. Anyone doing anything bit weird, a bit different, you know, you're a nutter, lock you up, keep you away from people, stigma, I work with people with so called learning disabilities, and there's no, no hint of insanity there, they're more sort of saying normal people. This doesn't taste of anything. I had a very interesting night last night. It was my definitely. Got in there. God's plan. Is your life and 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 your life your life your life your life your life your life life everybody's life. God's been in there. Doing stuff. Getting it ready. People get ready! Jesus is coming! Oh, Jesus, man. The word does not help. That word, Jesus, 
first used around 300 AD by the Romans. In Latin it means Hail Zeus. Who do we who do they hail? Hail Hitler. Hail Merkel. Hail Kaiser. Hail Zeus. God of the gods or whatever. So it could just be meaning the God of all, Almighty God, the invisible God, the God with no name, the God who made the universe. So So say God is coming, yeah. Awesome. I said that. And um I'll do what I I gotta do. And um everyone will do what they gotta do. It's God's plan, baby. It's, it's real. And yeah, people will scoff and laugh. <laughs> but he who laughs last, laughs longer. <laughs> you know, to get into your head that you're an eternal being, it takes a lot of practice. You keep reminding yourself never going to cease to exist. Hey, your body will die. Could die tomorrow. Die right now. I'm heart attack. But not your soul. And your soul, as only my friend said last night, is, you know, we're creating, we're creating. He was talking about building houses, but, you know, our souls create. Desires that we have create, and other things in our soul create, create the world around us. I've said this before. Right. Um. You know, basically I had an experience yesterday of what it's like for someone that I tell I'm Christ. It's just very, very hard to believe because it seems so exceptional, so, you know, unlikely. So I got a feeling of how that felt, you know. And you gotta let things take the time, you gotta sleep on it, you've gotta mull on it, you've gotta let it pop up now and then. But yeah. It's not it takes yeah, it does require some faith to believe. Because then, and that's the point where, you know, there's going to come, there's going to come some test of that faith, isn't there? And you'll be sitting there and you'll just suddenly think, oh my God, everything I've been thinking is just, you know, untrue, you know, how long, well, I mean, most of my life, <laughs> believe things that aren't true, I finally believe I've got the truth. And that I have. I was explaining to my friend the other day, you know, you just there wouldn't be anything here if we weren't eternal beings. You know, God wouldn't make us just to live a short life and that be the end of it. And we certainly, this universe and everything, just, just, just didn't be here by some hap chance Ooh, this here no one understands what it is but it's just here 
<coughs> it's a creator, a designer. This designer, this creator, knows so much more than we do. Particularly if you take the fact that, yes, this is your first time, and yes, when a little baby is born, he's only been aware for about nine months. His soul, even. We're at the beginning, that's why we don't know anything. We try, we've tried everything. Try everything to get that satisfaction that you never get until you feel God's love. And then you realise that is the only true satisfaction. That's why you couldn't find satisfaction anywhere else. Because eventually you were going to realise you need God. We're on the umbilical cord. We're in the, in the playgroup, even before then, in the creche. So take a load off. You're not supposed to know everything. God's got it in hand. And be happy. Right, what else are we going to make with this? So at the moment, it's just like a load of veg. Veg, all one colour, I've got no green in there. Now I've got a tomato. I had a tomato for lunch. Uh, what have I got? What have I got? Hmm. these Seville oranges and you say they're a bit bitter like do you reckon I should cook with it? Do you reckon that'd be puke? Yeah. Oh I dunno now. I'm gonna finish this off. Ah. Sorry, it'll be fine. I have some bread with it. So this is a thoroughly fascinating video. <laughs> Bet you're glad you watched this. Maybe I won't even upload it. Let's put the bread on here. You know sometimes simple taste is what you want. Didn't always need to be so fancy. Do some sauce though, what have I got? Mustard. I'll use that, I think. Right, is there anything else I was going to talk about? Um, let me think, let me think. Oh yeah, how are we all feeling about the end of the world? I kind of have put it out of my mind for a little while. And, um... Almost starting to... want it not to happen. Um, but every time I think about May or June 2016, I'm thinking if we get there, you know, I'll know, I'll know by then. <sighs> Is it going to be a big planet in the sky? Is there uh, some weird stuff going on? Well, I'd say yes. Saw so Stanley Kubrick thing saying the effect 
uh, Stanley Kubrick making a confession saying don't release this until 15 years after I'm dead. It's like five years after he's dead but it seems like it's been released. And he's saying that um, he faked the moon landing. So, the deception, <laughs> honestly, I, I'm, I think that's why I'm struggling a bit. I think I'm feeling uh, the deception full on, like other people's belief systems are just so far, far out. <laughs> <laughs> They're far out, yeah? I think I'm far out. I mean, they are far out there, babe. The deception machine is pumping at full volume. That's what it feels like. So it's like... It feels like it's a struggle to get into the, the real truth. Oh, I've got something else on my mind as well. But <coughs> Some people want to come and live with me. <laughs> be a bit weird, a bit hard. It's a small house enough. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see what God brings. So, <laughs> that's it. Part two later.